Hey, this is Chug, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the application of some of the ideas that I had in the dual strategy video. So, this game was played about a month ago, and we're just going to look at my thought process step by step, how I decide where to, where to go and what I want to do. Round begins so, we're on Blood Run, Three, two, <coughs> and yeah. One. Round nail gun spawn. So, what do I get? I get the nail gun, obviously. I have preferential spawn for the heavy armor as well. Uh, where does my opponent spawn? My opponent spawns right next to the rockets. So there is an option for him to grab the rockets, rocket jump up to shotgun, and contest for the heavy armor. Most players won't do that. They'll just get the rockets dropped down for mega, because that's the easiest choice. But there is some higher level decision making with regard to which uh, spawn path you take. Um, just so you know. Just have one and just use it and just observe how your opponent reacts and the different choices that they can make, okay? Moving on. <clears throat> so get the heavy, slide in. I'll just note that um, this path I've practiced um, not very much. You have five minutes, ten minutes, just drilling that, uh, drilling the precise uh, slide angles and jump timing. Just because this is so common, as this is the way I, I like to play this spawn, I might as well be good at it. So I've refined it because really speed and efficiency is really important um, in order to create an opportunity um, that maybe your opponent's not expecting you to be somewhere so quickly, and it can save you. Because in this position, if you get this especially good, oh, it's nine seconds. Normally I'm here at like eight and a half seconds. Um, I stuff up the slide, it actually runs out here. But your opponent can be here looking at have the rail and look at this position and hit you with the rail shot. So it's important that you can get this as clean as you can and hope that your opponent is a little bit slower than you are so that you can get to uh, get past the um, the angle before they can get in position. Okay, so from here I'm coming up to high position because that's something that we want. Okay, what else do we want? So we've got stacks fine, game time no pickups are up. They're about, they're, they're about the same time in 20 seconds. It doesn't matter. We need the lightning gun and the rail gun. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm sneaking and I'm listening for my opponent. And I'm trying to find an opportunity to get those things. So I'm not actually prepared for this. I didn't expect him to be here. So it was just a flick rocket sort of out of reaction. But uh, I soon realized that, hey, i got to get forward here because he's going for rail. Um, I can do some chip damage, and if I can hurt his armor, if I can hurt him, his armor gets depleted. That means he has to go and pick up armor. I sort of control his path a little bit by doing chip damage. I get betray damage here. Spam is like, meh. I'm predicting that he moves back and he moves forward. You know, it's not very good. He hits the rail just because he's a good player. I actually didn't see here. If you looked uh, just a second ago, he actually. Uh, flashed a little bit here as he went down, but I didn't see in the moment. I th thought I saw him here, and uh, I continue to spam far too long, and I think that he's sitting at blood pool, so I drop because I want the railgun, and fire a rocket in case he comes out. But it turns out he was already long gone, but yeah, that's a mistake of mine. If you can hear, I'm not sure, there was the uh, teleporter exit, so I know he's above me. So Okay, so now I evaluate this, the situation again. Okay, what's the time? 29, so the both pickups are up very shortly. My health stack is quite low, or I'm I'm injured in both health and armor. So what do I do? I get this health, and I get to, and I want to cut cut off this. Uh, well, not cut off. I want to beat him to this pickup, and uh, cleanly just get there. Stopwatch. Cool stopwatch. Slight mis mistake here. <clears throat> Before I um, get the pickup, I don't have lightning gun. So when I get to this point, I should immediately go to the right, but I go to the left. I quickly correct that mistake, but it's a small inefficiency. This was really surprising. I didn't expect him to be here. I'm not sure what he's doing. He just picked up heavy armor, and I suppose he he didn't notice that I'd come through here. So he, he came to take Mega, and we sort of just run into each other by accident. I stuff up my sliding, running into a wall. I'm in a pocket here. It's just really awkward. Whatever. Okay. Now... We assess the situation again. Both the pickups are taken. Uh, I've, I'm missing some armor, and my ability is not on cooldown. So, okay, well, let's get some armor. 
let's get the ability. I was actually talking, so if, and I'll turn it up just so you believe me. But uh, I hear the sword leg jump. I heard a sword leg jump about here. For some reason, it maybe it sounds just weird in this game, but that makes me fire the LG defensively because I think that he's there. So now, <clears throat> since I believe that he's uh, that he's on those stairs, I want to come out here with railgun and trade damage. That's probably a bad decision. Why would I even want to trade rails in this situation? I'm not sure. Um, it's just a, a weird. It's just something that I want to do. I think it's probably a poor decision in hindsight. But uh, let's continue. Oh, because whenever you want to, you know, trade damage, it should be for a reason. It should be because you can retreat to the pickup, or you can uh, use that. Or he's already in a weakened state, and you're trying to uh, amplify that. Um, but uh, yeah, you shouldn't just trade rails because he's there. I might as well go for it. You should be deliberate about which rails you want, or which exchanges you go for. I didn't expect him to be so close. He's peeking out again. I should actually... It's important to note that I trade... Okay, well, right here. So we look at... I'm 112.25. I hit the rail. And I've lost basically no health, no armor. He, he did a, a very low damage rocket. So at the moment, I'm up in this trade. He peeks again. That's kind of strange. It's a good weapon switch by me. Um, I switched to LG. I got some good damage, and I evade the rail. Cool. Here's a mistake. I switched to rocket. This is an instinct of mine, uh, because the lightning gun makes noise, the rail gun makes noise. I like to switch to rocket to reduce that, because I don't believe that he's going to peek again, but um, he does, because he's, I don't know, he's mad because he's missed the rails, and he wants to do the damage against me. So if we look at the situation right here, this is quite poor because the height disadvantage. Rockets is the incorrect weapon choice because I have to hit a direct hit or maybe do splash damage by hitting the wall as well. By hitting the wall. Because uh, I can't see his f the ground where he's walking. And he hits the rail. Alright, so we re uh, reevaluate at this point. Look at the time. 101. We know that Mega Health is at 105 because we took it at 35. Stopwatch, if you were paying attention. Uh, and uh, realistically, we can probably drop, slide, and get there. But it's up in four seconds. So maybe we can get there before it spawns. And then he kill us. Because we know where he is. He's at shotgun. And he's probably aware of the timer as well. And he wants to drop down and do damage. Uh, my mistake here is thinking that he, w that he would actually do that. Because in hindsight, he's fairly injured himself. He's... He's done good damage, but uh, he's also taken uh, a rail and some LG damage, so he may not be, you know, trying to push me that hard. So recognizing that it's pretty risky to go for this mega health because he can drop and um, challenge, I decide, well, hang on, the uh, the pickups are at the same time. I'll just replenish a little bit and go for the mega, uh, go for the heavy armor, right? But suddenly. He's here. This is so shocking to me because I had a I had a good pulse on what was going on. Uh, I thought certainly he's going to drop for Mega because it's the right decision. But he read that he like, I deviated from my highest value decision, and he read that I would do that. So it's really good that um, that he made this read. Uh, if he didn't, or if I didn't deviate, if I just brain dead like, oh, Mega's up, I go for Mega. I'd have been fine. Maybe I could take a carry on. Maybe I could actually win. But, um, unli unlikely, by the way, because he is a better player than I am. But uh, this read on here is really clutch and crucial for him. So now, both pickups are up, and <clears throat> I've got 12 health. The armor in this room is gone. It's it's not a very <laughs> pleasant situation. So now I pick up both, uh, I pick both these uh, health pickups. I know that his, uh, he's thinking, aha, I'm in a great position. I've just won control, I'm going to secure heavy armor, I'm going to secure mega health. So this, so me coming out here to get this health is fine, but at this position I should go back to nail gun somehow. Uh, if I immediately go back the way I came, he could come through the teleporter and kill me, so what I think is the best decision is to go to the tri-bolt and drop down, 
um, and then escape uh, up through LG. Tentatively go around this corner because he might be waiting uh, in this section. But uh, instead, I was just so frazzled and shocked by what has happened that I come out here a little bit. Um, yeah, I should have I should have expected that he. Would, I actually did expect him to be down here as, as I crossed. You should, you could tell from my crosshair, and the fact that I um, slid really close to the wall. But him being up here, totally unexpected. I hit two rockets. They're okay, but uh, with the you know with the health situation as it was, he just crushed me. So I hope that you can understand and appreciate that I'm constantly reevaluating what do I need, what do I want, and making decisions based off of that. And if you do that, a good player will still beat you. And it's important to notice when this happens. And it's, I shouldn't think, oh, well, he stayed there, you know, he went, he stayed at Shotgun, that was a bad decision, or I, or he's so so smart that he managed to do that. No, I just understand I'm learning and. That's an option for him to do, and I could do that myself if I were in his situation. So it's all imp always important to keep a, a positive outlook on dying, and just recognize that the decision was bad. Um, I should mention that uh, before really going into Duel, you should really have good ability to play the game, control your character, uh, fire, you know, fight with the weapons. Because when you die, you can be confident that it was a positional mistake or a big macro decision mistake rather than oh well if I just hit a good rocket he was dead you know um, yeah <clears throat> that's probably the biggest thing my um my my rockets are terrible my LG is okay sometimes my rails not very good uh, so I really should be working on the mechanics of fighting and that that is my priority but I've with work and not work with the uh, uni and um, you know, these videos that I'm making for you. Uh, I'm not developing as fast as I can, but that's, you know, it's through experience and through careful, um, deliberate practice that I can get improve in these, these areas. Uh, anyway, this is more rambly than I thought. I just wanted a short video to describe, uh, to apply some of the things that I was talking about. But uh, yeah, I hope that this was helpful and not too rambly and, and puts it in better context as to how you're supposed to operate in these sorts of situations. So uh, yeah, see you later.